Hi there. So I was recently asked to do a tutorial on how to make wood floors, wood doors, like wooden planks and how I paint them to look realistic. So I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to do it. And I'm going to use mostly these reed strips that you can buy in any kind of craft store or even Amazon, which I'm going to post the link to. Um, it's basically people buy them to do basket weaving, so it's really available pretty easily. So hopefully you guys enjoy the build, and if you have any questions, um, comment. And if you have any other suggestions, also let me know. Enjoy. So we're going to get started. Uh, main things we need are the reed strips that you can buy for basket weaving. Cardboard. I'm using these uh, filing cabinet folders because I have plenty of them and let's face it, no one really uses filing cabinets anymore. And lots and lots of PVA glue. Okay, first thing we need to do is cut a bunch of these uh, reed strips into smaller planks. And um, they can be cut irregularly because, I mean, no one really cared much for geometry and equal lengths, I'm guessing, during that time period. So, I mean, even now we don't really care much about it. This is going to be a really long, tedious process, so I'm going to do some special effects that may or may not blow your mind, so fair warning. Now that you've uh, been summarily impressed by my special effects on this video, um, the next thing we have to do is basically just cut out the cardboard base for it. And um, this is essentially just to give it structure. I've actually been meaning to pre-make these wooden plank floors or just wooden plank tiles in general that I'd have them readily available at when I need them as opposed to constantly having to make them every time I need wooden floors or a wooden bridge or a wooden door. So what I've been wanting to do is just have a sheet of just wooden planks on essentially a tile, a giant tile. So this was actually a great coincidence that somebody asked me to do this. And I finally got the motivation to do it. Because every time I do a build, I like making them modular so you can play inside. But after I'm done with the build, I really don't want to work on the inside anymore. Hopefully this makes it easier. So at least I can put wooden floors on it. All right, next thing we need to do is just slap them on. Just PVA glue, lots of it. And then just kind of stagger the wood planks everywhere. Just like you would see in any kind of old style tavern. I mean, they don't have to be pretty. Like I said, no one really cared about geometry too much. And they don't have to be straight either, because you're gonna have to cut them anyway. So this is essentially how it's gonna be, all the way down here. And uh, there's other options. It's also easy to use hot glue gun as opposed to PVA glue, um, especially sometimes the reed strips are kind of curvy, so you have to kind of weigh them down for them to actually stick. But it's a tedious process, but it makes the builds look really nice. And um, I'm gonna keep doing this, and I'll come back when it's all done. Thank you. 
So, quick update. Uh, PVA glue wasn't working very well just because um, the reed strips are way too curvy that it's fighting the paper. So it's trying to curve away from the paper. So it's much easier to use hot glue. I mean, it's a lot more annoying just because of the constant burning and the constant uh, reloading of the glue. But it seems to be working a lot better than uh, the PVA glue. So, so far so good. So this is pretty much almost done. Looks very uneven, very chaotic, but that's how I like my wooden floors looking like. And um, pretty good, uh, decent sized sheet. I can probably get a few floors out of this thing. Um, problem with the hot glue is it leaves all this um, webbing and but since there's no um, foam on this thing I like to just burn them off with a regular lighter or a candle if you prefer but it's so much easier and um, it does melt all of the uh, hot glue gun webbing that it gets really in the way of everything you do it's works really well as long as there's no foam to melt, I always do this, and um, that's it. Next thing to do is uh, just scratch it up a little bit, and then give it that uh, well-worn wooden texture. Just kind of just take a bunch of strips off with a regular you know, X-Acto knife. Be careful, it tends to be really sharp. I get really careless. I get start getting impatient and start like rushing things and uh, get a little careless, get a little too, just try to speed it up to get it over with. So, son of a, ah. Well, like I said earlier, uh, make sure you're careful with the uh, X-Acto knife because they tend to get a little less stabby and a little cutty. Um, but after scouring all the uh, scratches and uh, wornness of the wood, uh, it's time to paint it black. Um, I usually just use any kind of cheap acrylic paint because, I mean, they all work the same way, especially when it's just base painting it black. Make sure you get um, all of the grooves that you just scoured or scored into the wood. Get that blackened as much as you can because that will show really well when you're finally painting uh, the grains in the, in the wood itself. So the black paint has completely dried and uh, I guess I should have mentioned also that since there's no foam on any of this we could have used um, spray paint also but it's too cold outside and I didn't really want to deal with that. So acrylic paint was the way to go but it's time to paint. Every time I paint wood I make sh always go to the same three colors. It's um, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, and Warm Gray. Um, I like these colors blending together. Um, I always seem to think that that's what wood is supposed to look like, so that's what I always go for. So you basically just, you basically just slap the brown base color 
all over the place. I mean, since uh, most of it's supposed to look brown, um, you can see all the scoring that you did with the uh, with the, the Exacto knife. It still shows deeply because of uh, the black base paint. And then I just like to put a few contrasting colors in there. Burnt Sienna is what I always like using. Since it's uh, kind of like makes the whole barkless wood effect, I'm guessing. I don't know if that's a word. I don't know if that even makes sense. But in my head it does. So I kind of just dry brush it in there. If it gets a little too thick, just make sure you wipe it down. And then just blot the your paintbrush and just dry brush it and just slap it slap the paint on it I mean that's really the only way I can really describe it yeah. have little contrasting shades there so it's the same idea with the warm gray but I like to like use it a lot less than the two other colors i use uh burnt sienna heavily just to get that really brown wood effect then i'd put the yellow ochre just to highlight the uh the scuffed up naked wood parts and um, i use warm gray a lot less than the other two colors just to give that contrasting light color to the backdrop of that burnt sienna and there it is i have a whole panel of uh wooden floors that i can use on any build at the ready after i'm done building the thing i can just Cut this to fit a floor or i can cut it to fit a door or a dock or a bridge but it's nice to have this at the ready whenever you need it as opposed to cobbling it up together whenever you need it so one quick build i can do out of uh, these pre-made uh, wooden planks is a dock like a pier or some sort of fisherman's wharf so basically just cut off a strip from here and cut off notches for where the posts would go and what i like using for posts are chopsticks you just cut off the desired length so you got this you just score it with the exacto knife to make it look like uh it's worn out wood and what I like using for ropes and riggings is usually a uh, cheesecloth. Just get a thin strip of it. Like so, and a uh, little bit of PVA, PVA glue, kind of just roll it. And make it look. And since it's already sticky with the glue, you can just roll it around the post. There you got yourself a post for a pier and you just pretty much put it where the notches would go and then paint it like wood and uh, I like painting uh, the ropes a little yellow to make it look dirty to make it a little bit more worn out. So I'm done with my uh, pre-made wooden panel tutorial. Um, Pretty simple, pretty easy. It's very convenient when you just need to slap on a wood floor or make a door or make some sort of pier. And it's nice to just have it ready made. And for example, I have this, um, my Hobbit house that I finished the outside. It's modular, but I was too lazy to do anything on the inside after I finished with it. So now I can put wood floors on it since I have a pre-made wood panel. 
So I ended up uh, you just cut it. And there you go. So now, at least the Hobbit hole has some sort of flooring. And it's nice when you already have this and you don't have to go through the tedium of gluing all that wood on this cardboard. I hope this helped. I uh, hope uh, gave you good ideas. Thanks for watching.